Hi, this is Terry, and welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I thought I would go more de in detail about the instruments on this guitar stand. Um, you've already seen the eight string guitar over there on that stand. Um, this is my um, SX um, six string uh, bass. It's a jazz, j um, a jazz style bass, um, and it's. Um, made by, uh, you can get it on the Rondo Music website, it's, but SX, I think is like, I don't remember if XX, SX was the brand name, because here's, here's the headstock, um, but yeah, go on Rondo Music, and you can, I don't know if they sell this exact base, but that's what I, I ordered this, I don't remember if I ordered this one on Rondo, or if I ordered it off eBay, but it was only like $150, and it's actually a pretty good, passive six string bass tuned B E A D G C and it's got two volumes and a tone control like a typical jazz bass um it's not a super heavy bass it's like an average weight of a six string bass um my Paul Gilbert guitar which I use a lot um and then my main bass is my New York Pro, my two main, one of my two main basses anyway. For my main five string, this is my main five string. It's in fact the only five string I now own. I sold my other one. Um, this is a New York Pro um, five string bass. It's in, hold on, I'll pull it off here real quick so you can see the body. It's um, a sunburst finish. It's got jazz style pickups, which I got to wipe off the dust from it. Sorry that I didn't do that before I made the video. Um, it's got two volumes in tone control. These are not the original um, knobs. I replaced them with these because I like doing my knobs where um, I can easily see what is a tone control and what's a volume control. I haven't done that to the jazz bass yet, but I will be doing that. Um, this one's 24 frets. So it has uh, almost the same range, range as that uh 21 fret i think that's a 21 fret six string bass um and then next is my glary six string bass which has humbuckers and it's basically styled body shape wise like an ibanez it's got two volumes and two tone controls um a volume and tone control for each pickup which is kind of neat um, and it's lighter than this one. I don't know how they achieve that, but yeah, it's a pretty light bass. Um, again, I haven't changed the knobs yet because I just got this one this last spring around the time of my birthday when I turned 49. Um, and then I got this mental health awareness uh, guitar strap for it. Oh, it's hard picking things up with my left hand. Ugh. All right, and then we're going to get into my short scale, two of my short scale guitars. You already saw one of them, the Paul Gilbert guitar. This is my Squire Stratocaster, and I ordered this one off of Amazon. Um, I really like that it does not have a vibrato bar, and as you can see, I already changed the knobs on this. I want to change the uh, switch selector thing to look different. I might want to get another pick guard at a different time and even change the pickups at some point. That's that one. Ooh, this is really hurting my shoulder a bit. All right. Um, then this is my Mitchell that I recently bought um, to help my shoulder. I'm going to have to set this on my bed a minute. Here's the headstock of the Mitchell. It's got three tuners on one side, three on the other. I really prefer this kind of a headstock instead of the inline headstock. Although I really do like the reverse headstock on the Paul Gilbert guitar. Um, it's got humbuckers. And it's got a three-way switch. Unlike my Paul Gilbert guitar, which has a five-way switch. My Strat, the Squire Strat I just showed you, has a five-way switch. I haven't changed the knobs on this one yet, but I do plan on doing that. Um, the pickups in this one are just okay. 
Um, at some point, I do want to replace them with something else, especially the bridge pickup. I think for the bridge pickup, I want to get a DiMarzio tone zone for the bridge. Um, I like the fret markers, um, that they're not in the usual spot you usually see on a, on a guitar. They're over here on this side instead of in the middle. Um, so that's really cool. I like the body shape a lot. Because I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's it's got a shape to it. It's not your normal Strat shape. It's kind of got some... Uh, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Although this part here where the horns are in here reminds me of an Ibanez. Um, it's, again, like the Strat, no vibrato bar. I'm just not a, a big fan of vibrato bars. Um, I used to have... Guitars with vibrato bars, they're fine. They're just not my thing. Um, if they're your thing, that's great. Uh, we each have what we like. At some point, do you want to get a guitar again with a vibrato bar? But I can't decide what kind of vibrato bar I want yet. Um, but yeah, that's the Mitchell. It actually sounds pretty good. Um, I really like the way it sounds with distortion. I want to show you the back side of it in a minute. Um, the way they designed where the bolt-on part is, is really nice because you can get those really high frets, which is really good. And here's the back of the headstock for those that want to, I'm, I'm trying, I don't know how to film this in such a way that you can actually read it really well. So here, um, that's the back of it. It's in MM100. It's an MM100. And then I just, you know, Got a, a really simple green guitar strap. I don't even remember what brand this guitar strap is, but I don't think it's anything fancy, but it's it's a good guitar strap. Um, and the way it's designed, it stays on the instrument really good. Um, so I don't have to worry about strap locks or anything. Um, but yeah, that's that one. And then there's one instrument left on the rack to talk about. And then I'll do a special video for my Yamaha bass. Um, but here's my J. Reynolds short scale P bass, which actually sounds pretty good. Um, with how short of a scale it is, though, I'm thinking of getting it turned into a piccolo bass. I had it set up as a tenor bass for a while, tuned A, D, G, C, like the four highest strings of a six string bass. Um, because at that time I did not have a passive six string bass. Um, as you can see, I already changed the knobs on it. Um, I will probably be putting stickers on this bass at some point. I really like this bass, but now that Squire makes a, a mini P bass, I'd like to get their mini P bass in red. Uh, when I got this one, I had, I couldn't choose what color I wanted. I I got this through my friend's music store and the only option that was available was black. But I really like it. Um, for such a small bass, here's what the tuners look like if you're wondering. It's actually a really cool bass for um, just sitting around um, watching TV and um, coming up with ideas for bass parts. Um, so that's, uh, this, this base, um, and that's everything that's on the rack. The only th other thing I want to talk about real fast is my bass amp that I use for my, my basses. Once I get this back safely on the rack. And this rack is neat. It holds seven instruments. I don't remember what brand it is. It might be on stage, or it's, um, oh, shoot, it says somewhere on it what brand it is. Anyway, here's my little 10-watt bass amp. Um, usually when I play at churches and stuff, I just go into a direct box out of my effects pedals. So out of my effects pedals into the direct box. Um, so, ugh. Scoot it closer so you can see it better. 
It's got bass, middle, treble, volume. It's got an auxiliary in and a headphone thing. So that's, it's really nice that I can like um, use it to learn parts off um, my uh, uh, iTunes. Um, and it's got an input jack. And if you're wondering what the back side looks like, thankfully this thing is not heavy. All it has is a label on the back and a back panel. I have no idea what kind of speakers are in it. Um, I'll have to do some more. I'll have to do some research on it and maybe do a video where I play through it with my effects pedal so you can see what it sounds like, um, which I do plan on doing soon. Um, probably in the video with the Yamaha bass. Um, but yeah, I like this bass amp. I've had it for almost 10 years. Um, I've used it at at least one church. I think I did use this at one church when I didn't go through a, a DI box. Um, I think. I'll have to look up my notes, go through my sheet music notes. Um, but I definitely know that I at least use this. I didn't use it on stage at church. I used this in the practice room because there was no practice amp for bass in the practice room. But I've also used it to learn songs too. So um, I like it. I like the way it sounds. I mean, it's not a fancy amp, but it, it works, especially living in an apartment. Oh, and this strap here on my five-string bass, it's got a pocket where you can stick picks. So that's really cool because sometimes I will use picks on bass. So um, that's that. Uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. I hope everyone has a great week.